so here's game two uh, against Super Chevalier. Uh, he actually had set a match, but after I beat him, he, he just quit. And then I joined him and said, hey, wasn't this a match? And then he grudgingly played me another game without really saying anything. So he won the dice roll on this one. Um, it worked out okay since I won the dice roll on the other one. Um, and it looks like everything's going to record properly. I'm here at the bottom playing Sliver Queen. He's playing Teferi and Mage of Zalfir. I'm going to go ahead and minimize Queen. And we'll get on with the game. So this is a great hand against Blue. Going first, I would say, like, I probably win because there's only a small handful of counters that could stop Sylvan. And then if you don't stop Sylvan and you're the Blue player, you lose. Um, so I draw tax, and then I'm like, hey, let's do this instead. I had intended to start with a verge. So I get to start off with value. He's running snow-covered island, so I get my snow-covered island first. Um, because if he's got, he's probably got, um, the artifact that, uh, you exile land, a basic land, and then, well, here... Here he plays a bounce spell at the end of my turn, and uh, just allows me to put it deep in the graveyard. That's cool. Another good thing about flashback cards. But anyway, he uh, probably has that artifact that lets you... Um so here... Hold on. So here he misplays. Ghost quartering that during my upkeep. If you're going to ghost quarter it, do it while I'm tapped out, not during my upkeep when I could have untapped and had two mana for Teferi's response. That's just stupid. Um, or, you know, an impulse or whatever. So, anyway, what I was saying about the artifact that he could have is the one that, re you know, costs three and you remove a land from the game, a basic land, and then all the basic lands with the same la name uh, then are mana flared. They produce double mana. Um, since he could have that this is actually why I play one single snow-covered island. If I played um, a second swamp, second plane, second whatever, uh, basic land, I would, they would also be snow-covered lands. So that when I face people who try to get around, um, play cards like that, and take advantage of them, um, I'm able to take advantage of them, even though it's only in a small way. However, uh, anyway, so far, it's all speculation. So I get down with um, vents or island there, and I figure I'm just going to go ahead and tax, and if he counters it, it's okay, because he's already behind thanks to the ghost quarter. At that point, I resolve deep analysis. Uh, he doesn't counter it, though, so I just say go. And there is a forest. So I go for deep. He allows. And, uh, great. I am perfectly fine discarding a land. I'm also okay with possibly just play, making a play here and just kind of grinding him down on cards. Because I have to keep an eye on this Teferi. I can't just say play the Drago game forever. So I decide, you know what, I'm going to Sylvan. I'm sure he's going to counter. He counters with a force blank. Okay. But I'm still in a pretty good spot. Because actually what I really need to do is get that Abyss on the table and protect myself from, uh, essentially turn off his commander. Who's coming? <laughs> so into his turn I uh, power up some mana just because uh, this gives me a very nice uh, base to work with. It allows me to, to abyss and remand here. So I go abyss and he has no counter. Or he, choose, he likes not to use one, so great. Five cards in hand, no idea what they could be, but one of them, perhaps, uh, perhaps like treachery or something. Okay, so compulsive, I allow, no problem. Although he's going to discard islands that he wanted to, uh, he doesn't want to play anyway due to land tax, um, it's fine. I don't have enough counters to argue with a compulsive research. So, wonderful draw here. And I decided to only put two counters. I probably should have put three, but I wanted to continue to telegraph um, more strength than I actually have. And of course, I don't play a land because of tax. I really would like to go get a planes here. 
I've got all my lands taxed up except for planes. But he doesn't know that, so... That's nice. I can continue to warp around tax. So I decide I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, give myself extra insurance against the ferry and hopefully draw out a counter. Now this was actually... And so I do, and I remand the humility back to my hand in response to his dissipate. Well, extra cards. This is actually the point at which I disagree with my play in hindsight. The correct play for me there with him having seven cards and attacks on the table was just to say go. If I say go, he has two choices. Um, draw a ten eighth card, play a land, and let me tax, or draw and discard. I win in both scenarios. I'm in good shape. So, casting spells into a seven card hand is not good at all. It just doesn't make sense. So foolish of me to have done this. Um, what you want to do is start bleeding counter spells after he starts making plays. Once he gets down to the sixth or fifth card in his hand, then you want to try to. Um, um, whittle it down from there, not from a full hand. So, very foolish of me. I let the humility happen. Not that I could do anything about it, I just don't care that much. It's actually bait anyway. But I decide, hey, you know what? He's down to only two mana. Let's try some more. Uh, since I have decided to go the whittle his hand down round, route, let's do it. So, there's a card. The commander has dressed away a card. Not a particularly significant card against me, but since I've started this route, I continue. So he cycles Vettelkin Ethermage for a Snapcaster. That's actually pretty cool. And then snaps up a uh, move soul. Okay. Fortunately, um, this does not allow him to put pressure on me. And so, um, as opposed to being, uh, so I get a boomerang out of it. Uh, he's going to be able to um, obviously snap again. <coughs> he's doing a great job of working around my attempts to uh, run him out of options here, while also avoiding the tax. A million bad counter spells against me are actually just becoming getting valuable here. Kind of frustrating, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep hammering away with the queen. Interestingly, if I tap out to play queen, he can actually allow that because of the interaction with the abyss. Um, possibly. Uh, she would die during my upkeep, but I could make a ton of tokens, so who knows. Oh, come on, don't walk up on us. Okay, there we go. No! You know, I really wish that instead of working on their piece of garbage beta, they would just fix the replay bug in this. Holy smokes. What a... How frustrating. So, anyway... Um, I don't remember what play he makes. Anyway, I, I do end up winning this game. Uh... I continue to sort of grind away with the uh, the queen at his hand. Um, eventually, draw um, a couple of other things that um, I draw a personal tutor and I personal tutor, and he he counters that because um, which he, which he kind of has to do because if he doesn't counter the personal tutor, uh, then as far as he knows, I can go get something with flashback or whatever. So. Uh, so he counters a personal tutor, uh, and a few other things, and eventually we get down to this point where I have a counter and he's got, ah, uh, right, where he, uh, he sacks his cephalid coliseum, and then in response I grudge his crypt, and then, uh, he, uh, tries to protect it with a counter spell? And then I flashback Grudge and kill his crypt, which basically sets him down three total mana. So he goes from this position here to just these lands here. And because of that, on the next turn, I'm able to make a play, which he then counters. 
and then follow it up with Karn, and he doesn't have enough mana to counter, and then that's the turn where he says, good game at that point. Um, so, yeah, it was all due to him sacking a Coliseum and then having Grudge. But back to my original discussion about flashback spells, if I didn't have Deep this game, and if I didn't have the Grudge on that turn that I'm describing, uh, none of that would have been possible. If that had been claimed, he would have just countered it. So, let me go ahead and show you the deck list yeah, one last time, if you have already seen game one. But here is what it looks like for now. Uh, no more Dragon, no more Earthquake, no more Rolling Earthquake, rather, no more uh, Fire Ice, no more Isochrone Scepter, and no Nature's Claim. So, uh, we've got Personal Tutor, Quiet Spec, and then the Spec Package, Grudge, Ray, Deep, and uh, that's it. So, I'll be interested in comments, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.